Hi there, my name is Jim Dooley. I'm uh, chairman of the fundraising of the Bombakamar Memorial Fund. Uh, I've been in that position more or less since uh, day one, which is exactly four years ago today, uh, when we all met at RAF Hendon. Uh, myself and Robin Gibb, uh, Sir Michael Beetham, Tony Iveson, Doug Radcliffe, and uh, a whole team of guys with a view to uh, um, starting a campaign to raise the, raise the money for uh, the Bomber Command Memorial. I'm very, very proud and privileged to be standing right now in front of the RAF Bomber Command Memorial, uh, a monument to uh, 55,500 young volunteers who, uh, who paid the ultimate sacrifice in uh, freeing Europe between 1939 and 1945 from, uh, from uh, enemy tyranny. So Douglas Radcliffe of 425 Alouette Squadron, here we are on a beautiful spring day in London and we're seated right next to the magnificent Bomber Command Memorial that's being built as we speak. Well, tell us about the amazing things that have happened since you started. Well it came from all, all walks of life, ordinary, ordinary people mostly, uh, I mean the first year uh, Vivian Hammer, the registrar, opened some 80,000 letters, all contributing. And we were backed by star, stars of stage, screen and radio from the Heritage Foundation. We were backed by industry, but mostly from ordinary people, from the Commonwealth everywhere. Uh, and we backed banked rather the first million in that year coming in from everybody and on my desk I've got a 2p coin stuck onto a little gift aid voucher where a little girl her father had already donated a considerable sum but she had to get in on the act and sent 2p and I've got that on my desk today always reminds me of how other people feel about it. This memorial um, is erected uh, on behalf of the 55,573 young volunteers who, uh, who paid the ultimate sacrifice between 1939 and 1945, uh, serving the RAF uh, on, uh, on bombing missions uh, in Europe. Uh, and uh, included in that total of 55,500 is, uh, is uh, over 10,000 uh, young Canadians um, and uh, Canada played a significant part uh, in, in uh, helping Britain and, and the Allies to uh, secure the ultimate victory. I am Liam O'Connor. I'm the architect and designer for the Bomber Command Memorial. Today we're having a little look at construction progress on the site uh, with just under 15 weeks to the completion in mid-June and looking at the structural stonework underway, the um, innovative stone entablature details over the Doric porticos to the lodger, which defines the central main mass of the memorial. How much work is involved in something like this? We've excavated about a thousand tonnes of Portland stone, real Portland stone that is, from the Isle of Portland in Dorset, just off the south of England. We've got an extraordinary, consistent quality of material to use, which is very lucky, because not every project gets that. And um, we have probably one of the best stonework manufacturing firms I've ever worked with, um, applying a level of dedication and skill and high tolerance work that I haven't seen on any modern stro stone structures, um, certainly in my career. Yes, this here is all uh, Portland stone. A lot of London is Portland stone. Probably this is why they went for Portland stone and this job here as well. It ties in with the rest of all the buildings and, and uh, uh, it's car over in Portland Island. And uh, the stone goes to Ireland and uh, into the factory there and carved out. Uh, you see that the way that went in and brought here on site. It fits perfectly. And it fit it perfectly, it did, yes. Are you proud to be here right now? Absolutely proud to be part of the Bombers Memorial. Indeed, really proud. Uh, 
so many young men give their lives if we could have the freedom we have today. And uh, I think it's, it's a very worthwhile memorial. Long time at common, but it's a great achievement at us here. Does this give you a feeling of pride to be standing here right now in this box and looking out over it? It does. There's an immense feeling of pride for me, uh, my team and my office, the structural engineers and the rest of the professional team that have been involved in making this happen. And it is a big team. Um, and it, it's such an unusual project to be doing in such a prestigious location at the beginning of the 21st century. One of the central concepts of the memorial was that we had a figure group on a plinth in the centre of the memorial. That sculpture group really dictates in many ways the proportions and dimensions of the internal central space of the memorial. The seven aircrew figures gathered together, huddled together on a porphyry plinth in cast bronze at nine foot high will probably be one of the most remarkable modern sculptures in the public realm in London in, in, in many decades. And I think arriving from Piccadilly through the lodger, not quite understanding what's about to hit you, I think the impression visitors will get when they arrive is one of awe. And that's what we hope will be achieved. And once you're inside the memorial, you don't see the faces of the figures. You have to engage with the memorial, move around it, and move to the south side of it before you see the expressions on their faces and understand who they are and feel the full emotional power of that extraordinary set piece. For all of our audience, uh, I, I need to state the fact that only, on average, only one in four airmen of Bomber Command finish their tour. Yeah, that's so. Uh, that's, this, that's the terrible statistic. But at last, they're being honored. Yes, a, a wonderful memorial. Yeah. Uh, we inspected it yesterday. And uh, it is only partially constructed. And could I add uh, an adjective of magnificent of this wonderful description? This is a, the, got to be the ultimate memorial. Well. Let's always record that part of it will be from a Halifax bomber for the roofing area uh, that you, Carl, imagine, and he brought it forth to us five or six years ago and we filmed it in the RAF, RAF club across the road from here. What a marvelous moment that was. I still remember holding that ingot and uh, marvelous, the most marvelous Credible moment for the Canadians. That's right, and uh, we are so uh, proud to be part of the uh, Bomber Command Memorial and uh, to do our contribution from Canada in the form of these aluminium ingots and to think that in 1997 those ingots could have gone to the tip pile, but we said no we must keep them for memorials, plaques and statues and here we are today. So the essence of eight men is in those aluminium ingots and we're so pleased that they could become part of the roof of the memorial. Uh, what do you think people will think when they notice they find out that this bomber is incorporated into the memorial? Well, they will be honoured by this. I mean, the very fact that we have a piece of a bomber out of the thousands that were blown out of the sky in the memorial. What well, a credit to, Cal to Canada that you've been, all this work you've done, Carl, to get it here, OK, and pursue it right to the end. And it's going to be the dome roof where the seven air crew looking up at it. They will be looking at the area of that Belgian Halifax. What a credit it is to you and the Canadians. Well thank you very much Douglas and um, the Bomber Command Museum of Canada is very proud to pass this historic aluminium on to you and your comrades for inclusion so it's it's just wonderful that this is unfolding the way it is.
Well, uh, to borrow a, a, a phrase from Winston Churchill, um, I think there can be no doubt that uh, that period between 1939 and 1945 was our finest hour. And uh, the freedom uh, that uh, those young volunteers earned for us uh, has uh, meant that uh, Europe uh, has essentially been in peace now for uh, a good, uh, good 67 years, and that's the longest it's ever known. I'm sure uh, each one of those guys, uh, you know, uh, young men of average age 22, would be uh, absolutely delighted to see this uh, monument erected uh, on behalf of them and uh, all their colleagues who uh, did their duty, yet uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice. What do you think the Bomber Command Memorial will mean to uh, generations that will be growing up after we're gone? Well, Carl, I can't talk for 50 or 100 years ahead, but even now, with the press and what is happening throughout the Commonwealth, there's an attachment and it's growing and people are suddenly become aware who weren't aware before of these great losses. They were not aware or indeed of all the other losses that took place during World War II. They will remember that and uh, never ever forget it.